Hey everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Myself, Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So today, a very interesting information for you all is that I have began a GK factory for you all. Yes, in the end of this session, I will be telling you a very interesting fact that is uh, absolutely a static GK fact, but that would be a very interesting fact for you all. So if you want to know that what is that fact. So let me give you the hint about that fact. So I am going to discuss the world's driest place, the driest place in the world where not even a single drop of water is available. Yes. So we will be looking at some facts related to that, but that too in a very interesting manner. Okay. So if you want to know what is there in the GK factory that I have, then you have to stick with this session till the end of this session. And believe me, guys, the questions that I take up in the session are not very, uh, very, I would say, boring or very complex. Okay, they are very relevant questions. They are not irrelevant or insignificant questions. So do watch this session till the end so that you can uh, gather understanding of the current affairs that are going on and also understand the manner in which you have to study the current affairs okay so let's begin Achha, the next information for you all is particularly for the people who are watching me for the first time that this pdf is available you can download it from the telegram group and the link is in description below on that note let's begin so here we have the first question which company is establishing india's first green hydrogen based energy storage project so out of these options the right answer is ntpc okay so ntpc is going to establish this india's first green hydrogen based energy storage project or plant or now you need to understand this thing energy is stored in grids so under this project micro grids will be established by NTPC to store the energy that is derived from the green hydrogen. Now, I hope that every one of you know what green hydrogen is because I have taught this thing many times and green hydrogen is an important concept. But the people who are watching me for the first time, let me tell you that green hydrogen is the hydrogen that is obtained from renewable resources. So I hope that you know that hydrogen is obtained through electrolysis of water electrolysis is the process of separating oxygen and hydrogen okay so in the electrolysis process the energy that we are using that energy is also obtained from one of the renewable resources like solar or wind okay and the energy that we are deriving by using the electrolysis that is we are separating hydrogen and from hydrogen we will further create energy so that energy would also be a renewable or green energy so that's the basic concept of green hydrogen. I hope that now you all would remember what green hydrogen is and what's the concept behind this, okay? So this uh, is the entire thing. This is the entire functionality of this news. Now, where is it going to be established? So NTPC will establish this first of its kind green hydrogen based energy storage project at its uh, at its facility in Simhadri. Now, where is it located? It is located near Vishakhapatnam, not in Vishakhapatnam, near Vishakhapatnam in Andhra Pradesh. Okay. The next point that you should be knowing is that this is the same location, this is the same facility where NTPC has also established its solar plant. So, this is also another fact that you should be remembering. Can you guys tell me what is the renewable energy target that NTPC is pursuing right now? What is its own renewable energy generation target? This is your question. Do mention it in the comment section below. Moving on to the next question with which company has ISRO signed an MOU for boosting research on Navic messaging system? service so we have starlink oppo bharati foundation bellatrix aerospace pixel here guys the right answer is oppo okay so we all know what oppo oppo is oppo is the mobile uh, brand so with this company uh, isro has signed this mou to collaborate or to increase the research on navic messaging service now what is this navic messaging service navic is basically
इंडियाज ओन नेविगेशन सिस्टम ओके now prior to developing this we were using us gps right now also majority of us use gps provided by united states of america so in order to replace that system to change the status quo isro has designed this navic and it it is basically completed okay in order to just further leverage this system the uh, isro has partnered with oppo so that's the basic news all about you should also be aware of the fact that isro chief k shivan has uh, announced back in the year 2019 so this was the announcement made by him that we are going to have our own space station and we will start working on that space station after uh, we complete the gaganyaan mission so this is also an, an interesting fact that india will now work on its own space station one step space station is international space station which is created through a collaboration of many countries okay the space station uh, that china has created has also been completed it is already there in the orbit can you guys name the sp uh, space station that china has created in the comment section below so this is second question for you all all the questions that i have asked you so far i has already taught you those uh, questions in the previous sessions okay the one point that we did not discuss so far is this that international maritime organization has also recognized navic as a component of worldwide radio navigation system so this is another important fact that you should be aware of next question which state has the highest employability as per the india skills report 2022 so here guys the right answer is maharashtra so before moving into the report let me tell you that this report has been drawn on two bases okay so basically this report tells us about two things first is the employability of youth second is the intent of corporations okay so we are not going into the details of this that how many companies are going to hire how many people this is not something that this report has focused upon what this report is emphasizing is that the employability of youth has increased to 46% okay 46.2% so this means that 46.2% of the youth is now employable that means they are industry ready and they can be employed so this is a very good news okay so now let's move into the facts of this report the very first fact that you should be aware of is that this report is released by an organization named v box now this organization might seem to you very insignificant but do not ignore this report on the basis of the organization okay because this report is not the sole output of this organization no this is a joint effort of e box with aicte association of indian universities cii and the other agencies which includes undp and ministry of skill development okay ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship so these are the agencies that have collaborated to re uh, release this report okay to prepare this report now the theme of this report is rebuilding and reengineering the future of work so this is the theme now i have already told you that what this report focuses upon that is the pattern the hiring pattern and the skill distribution in the country basically the employability of the youth is one thing that is being assessed and secondly the intent of the company so vbox national eligibility test and india hiring intent survey these are the two tools through which this report is prepared so this uh, vbox national eligibility test has assessed 3 lakh candidates whereas india hiring intent survey has assessed 150 corporations 
Okay, moving further, we have top five states with highest employability as well as top cities with highest employability. What does uh, we mean? What does I? Uh, what do I mean when I say that these are the top five states with highest employability? This means that these states harbors an ecosystem that provides more jobs to the people in comparison to other states of the country. Okay, so Maharashtra here stands at the first position. Uttar Pradesh at the second, Kerala third, West Bengal fourth, Karnataka fifth. City wise, we have Pune at first, Lucknow three, uh, Tiruvananthapuram, and Kolkata. Now, here are three facts from this report that I deemed important, therefore, I have put it here. So, the very first fact is that 46.2% of India's youth is now employable, which has increased from 45.97% last year. So, again, this is a very good news. For the year 2022, what this report has forecasted that women's employability is higher than that of men's. Okay, so the percentage for women is 51.44% and for men's it is 45.97%. Gujarat has topped the list of states with highest availability of employable BA uh, and MBA graduates. It's BTEC, not BA. Okay, BTEC and MD, uh, MBA graduates in India. Moving on to the next question. Which country is the chair of Council of Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure of SCO for 2021 to 2022? So here we have the five options. The right answer is India. Now guys, SCO, we, I have already taught you this thing many times that SCO's three main bodies are the SCO Council of Head of state, head of government, and the foreign affairs ministers. Okay. This is the decision making body, and uh, this is basically this basically advises the head of government council, advises the head of state council. Now, I have mentioned this chart precisely because I'm going to ask a question from you. And my question is that which country is going to host the SCO head of state summit 2022? This is your question. Do mention it in the comment section below. As far as the uh, heads of government council is concerned, so let me tell you that recently the meeting of this council was held by Kazakhstan. Okay. Now, this foreign affairs Council is not very important, firstly, because they conduct their meeting on a very periodic basis, basically on a very regular basis. That is what I meant to say. Secondly, this is the implementation secretariat kind of a body for SEO. Therefore, it is not very important and their summits are not important from exam point of view. Similarly, akin to these bodies, SEO also has the council for the uh, regional anti-terrorist activities okay which is this council basically okay so this is also a body under seo now let's first discuss the members also of seo so we have russia china okay china india pakistan and Iran. Okay, so Iran was the major reason because of which I wanted to discuss the members as well. Then we have Central Asian countries, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, and Tajikistan. Turkmenistan is not among the members of SEO. So these are the nine members of SEO. I hope that you do remember the members. Okay. If you are not able to memorize these members, you can just group them into two, two, uh, into a group of two, two uh, into a group which includes two countries. First group would include Russia, China that are aligning. Another group would have India, Pakistan that are always fighting. Uh, then we have Iran that always stands aloof. Then we have four Central Asian countries. Okay, in Central Asia we only have five countries. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Taj uh, Taj Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan. Only Turkmenistan is not here. Apart from Turkmenistan, all the other four Central Asian countries are a part of SCO. 
so i hope that it will help you in memorizing this entire members list of sc now let's move further into this uh, into this news so what has happened is that india has assumed the chairmanship of this council and as part of this uh, entire thing of assuming the chairmanship india has hosted a seminar of a seminar which was organized by national security council secretariat in association with the data security council of india so this was the theme of this seminar securing cyber space in the contemporary threat environment next question is what is the theme of india mobile congress 2021 connectivity for the next decade is the right answer now this is basically a, an annual event that is conducted by department of telecom with cellular operators association of india the theme for this year was connectivity for the next decade which bank has won the digi dhan awards from ministry of electronics and it so here the right answer is karnataka bank now karnataka bank has got this award under the private sector bank category um for for achieving the highest target in bhim upi transactions and do remember that it has got two dg awards in the same category for the same purpose but for two different years one year is this and another year is this now you don't have to memorize it in so much depth it is just for your understanding now as far as the exam question is concerned you can just memorize that dj dhan award is given by this ministry this bank has won this award for these two years okay next question is who has won the ramanujan prize for young mathematicians from developing countries in 2021 neena gupta is the right answer so neena gupta who belongs to this indian statistical institute he she is presently working here has won this ramanujan prize for young mathematician now this prize is given since 2005 in remembrance of shri nivasan ramanujan who is a very very renowned mathematician his birthday is celebrated as mathematics day in india can you guys tell me the date of mathematics day or the birth date of shri nivasan ramanujan this is another question for you okay so as far as this award is concerned you need to know that these organizations are the custodian of this award they basically confer this award upon the people the point that you should be memorizing from exam point of view is that the people who are less than 45 years of age are only eligible for this award okay so this is the limit for becoming eligible to receive this award also this award recognizes the research that is done by a mathematician belonging to a developing country okay so this is another point so as far as this award is concerned these are the points that you should be memorizing and do not forget to mention the answer of mathematics day this is an additional point no need to memorize the amount that is given under this award okay so this is another award that has been given very recently royal institute of british architects has conferred the 2022 royal gold medal upon indian architect bal krishna doshi so do remember bal krishna doshi he has got this royal gold medal so the questions the types of questions that can be framed from this news only first question is in which field is this award given royal gold medal who has won this award for this year for basically 2022 which organization or the country which gives this award who is bal krishna doshi basically which field is he associated so i have framed four questions out of this single liner okay so this is how you should also think of the types of questions that can be created out of one news okay so here we have this gk factory the very new initiative by me so today i'm going to discuss about the world's very dry the driest place in the world where you would not find even a single drop of water so this is the desert of atacama
now the speciality of this desert is from the very uh, look of it you can yourself uh, make the comparison between the soil of this desert and the look of mars so this is also called the mars uh, the mars of the earth we can say because the land is very uh, red here and the entire atmosphere is similar to mars atmosphere so that is one speciality another one is that it's the world's driest place so the exception here is that the biosphere is present here otherwise uh, people would die uh, who are living at the outskirts of this desert they also would die if there would be no biosphere now guys do you know where is it located so it is basically it spans across four countries majorly the major proportion of this desert is in chile okay so chile is the one country then we have peru this is chile this is peru bolivia maybe this has some portion and in argentina so basically uh, this desert is uh, spread across four countries and i have written the countries uh, in the descending order the country which has the highest proportion of this desert is written at the first position chile peru bolivia and argentina mountain wise it is west to the ends mountain which is here near here and because of these ends mountain the monsoon and the hot current winds are not able to come to this desert and therefore there is no rainfall and because there is no rainfall there is no water in this desert so then who created this giant hand in the midst of this driest place this is a very intriguing question that human civilization has existed even in the most severe of the conditions like the atacama desert so this is the giant human ha hand now it is located in atacama desert and we all know that atacama desert spans across four countries so in which country precisely is this located it is located in china So guys here this video ends do tell me how do you how did you feel about the new gk factory that i have opened and the uh, basically the fact that i told you about the atacama desert do mention it and i'm going to tell you about the world's uh, desert that has the most amount of water in the next video so thank you so much guys for watching this video and if you have liked it then do share it subscribe this video subscribe the channel and like this video thank you so much